Bonsoir, nous allons enchaîner. Good evening. We're going to continue with the final part of this uh, event. I uh, hope you're not too tired. I now uh, welcome Professor Michel Reynaud, who's just arrived. Welcome, Michel. It's a pleasure. It's a ritual now to have you, Michel. It's a pleasure and an honor, and always an intense uh, moment. It's become an addiction, in a sense. For our Anglo-Saxon friends who don't know her, Michel, Ren Michel Renault, because the French community probably know him, uh, for, uh, briefly, Michel Renault is a university professor, uh, an addictologist, an addiction specialist. He's written about 200 uh, publications, several books, and one of the main players in 2015 with the French governmental anti addiction uh, substance abuse uh, plan. So I might say you are faced with a, uh, a major player. So beyond this official mission, Michel is the founder and president of the Action Addiction Fund, which supports uh, f uh, pro program pro programs uh, to fight addiction with the public and uh, private funding, which is a very p active foundation, and also the Edict Aid Village, which is a, an internet village on which uh, you can find resources for families, professionals, and individuals. It's extremely, extremely convivial. Uh, there's a newsletter, uh, the Village Letter, which features a lot of interesting information, and uh, we really needed it, something like that in France, and Michel did it. So I think it's uh, important to talk about. So I'll leave the floor now to Michel. But once again, well, a final word. Uh, next to Michel is Albor, Albert Caporessi. But Michel, but Albert is one of the founders of the the French patient uh, addiction uh, movement. It's a very important movement because we know through a lot of uh, research and work in the field that uh, helping each other, mutual aid, makes recovery and we have more solid, more robust, much more than psychiatrists and psychologists like myself, um, among those who in the know. And I'll stop there because otherwise I'll go on too long. So thank you, infant. Thank you very much for Michel and Albert to for coming. And I'll leave the floor to Michel. Thank you. Thank you for this kind presentation, this kind introduction. If you if you carry on like that, I'll have to come back next year because of my uh, uh, natural narcissism uh, makes me want to uh, experience that again. So what else? What could I say? So the Action Addiction Fund supports a certain number of programs, research programs. It also supports uh, information and prevention work with the Addictaid portal that uh, we just mentioned. And I hope that you go to look at it uh, regularly. There's lots of resources you can find there. And recently, I received a p proposal to uh, for the ICAD uh, newsletter, which is called Bubble or something like that. A newsletter, and I thought the themes are fairly similar to the what we do. So that's <coughs> so. If we could be maybe work together, that would be a good thing. What else could I say? So we support this uh, information, uh, and we also provide support for patients and patients associations uh, in train with training. In the last four years, we started to take part in. Um, uh, helping them uh, do university degrees, um, which are pa expert patient university degrees. And these diplomas are only university diplomas. And there are a lot of expert patients. Some are self-proclaimed uh, experts and some who are approved by medical bodies. And there are obviously uh, other experts in many other disciplines. And this is becoming a societal issue that we're talking a lot about, uh, uh, like I'm going to talk about later, because uh, pa expert patients, Albert's going to talk a bit more about that. But they seem to be the two main uh, new events, the appearance of expert patients, that they're the space they can take up in, 
in and building up uh, treatment policies, how they work with the existing structures and communities. Um, the mutual aid communities are extremely uh, useful, as you rightly say, and how they work with other expert patients in fields such as cancer, ne nephrology, multiple sclerosis, and uh, and there, there's and that's uh, we have this uh, France uh, Health Association, Asso Santé, which is uh, which collects uh, which brings together all these expert patients and. And they didn't want to, when I suggested it, join together a few years ago to create a recognition, uh, acknowledgement of the expert patient, because it's very different between the different disciplines. In addiction, the mutual aid associations have a therapeutic e effect alongside the the, treat, the standard treatment uh, procedures, but it's undeniable and uh, has undeniable therapeutic effects. Um, with uh, the connections are slightly complicated. It's not the same thing as in other uh, disciplines. And in the Addict Aid portal, and uh, we we've created a virtual uh, mutual help uh, community, and and lots of things happen in this community. People talk to each other. They they support each other. They t talk about their difficulties, and it's different to what we've seen as doctors. I've just seen presentations here, and we have uh, a life story based on a clinical uh, symptoms and and diagnostic. On these these associations on this platform, you have the life story with ups and downs, and people share their emo emotions. So it's two different approaches, two ways of looking, two different ways of looking at the same people. And doctors, no matter how empathetic they can be, are sometimes uh, a bit distant. Uh, and it's different to what uh, people are, are saying in associations, uh, which provide a different type of help. So the second point, because expert patients seems to be one of the most important points, and Albert will talk about that next. But the second element that is going to shake up your life is the AIC uh, health. Uh, e uh, digital technology is everywhere. As e health, you it's, e health is everywhere. We talked about um, uh, everyone saying you need to do to tele uh, tele uh, monitoring. You need to do e health. So w you hear that all over the place in the background at the moment, and you you can see that something's happening, but it's not yet properly underway. Uh, but there's already a lot of uh, experiments that when we look them closely, it shows that something's going on. For example, in the UK, you have um, uh, a platform, uh, mon online monitoring, which I think that uh, gives you a pretty in-depth understanding of the number of patients, the treatment they take, the, the time it takes to get an appointment. All of these things are useful for the people who are planning uh, healthcare. So we don't have that yet in France. So I think that e e-health is going to be the fourth <coughs> revolution in terms of perception and understanding addiction. In the 80s and 90s, um, uh, there was alcoholism and drug abuse, which was a, a societal issue. It was not dealt with by uh, doctors. It was the work was left to associations and and former patients, militants, uh, uh, activists. Uh, in the the year 2000, there was um, there were numerous reports that were drafted to to help us conceptualize addictions. Uh, there was a focus on addiction and. Uh, this work was used by the the, author the pu public authorities with great difficulty, thanks to negotiations that uh, took months, where you need a, a, an approval from the Ministry of Agriculture, who accepted, because it had it, had it, uh, and we managed to get this to accept this to get be this to get. Uh, accepted by the, uh, minist the Ministry of Ag Agriculture to accept to work on addiction. And what professionals have started to do is work on university-based uh, structures, organizations, uh, worked alongside uh, our increased understanding of the brain. So in the year 2010, 
Uh, we had the third revolution, which was a far more pragmatic approach, which was a risk um, reduction and uh, ha and harm reduction. There was uh, it was a completely different uh, diff different approach to just the uh, abstinence. Uh, we had a different uh, categorization of addiction, which was the greater or lesser uh, harm. And we had to get people to accept. We had to get all the the all the different partners to in, who work in addiction to accept that this uh, harm reduction, this risk reduction, is important uh, technique, and it needs to be accepted by the uh, culture, the drug culture, and and it wasn't accepted in and um, drug and and alcohol and tobacco. So it's uh, little by little it's been accepted by um, the relevant players and professionals. And we started to uh, accept this uh, this approach of risk reduction. In 2020, uh, we'll see the explosion of uh, digital technologies. I remind you that smartphones, we all have one in our pockets. And it's only came out in 2008, 2009. So in 10 years, we have uh, seen a huge transformation of the tools uh, the social tools, uh, uh, leisure tools. So this device is even more uh, important than the car. We don't know how to regulate it yet. Uh, we uh, we don't know how to regulate e-health, but it is is coming, and it's coming uh, in the field of addiction. And in the field of addiction, it will provide. If we accept that there is there's a big treatment gap in addiction, that's. That's the most important in, e in all um, psychiatric pathologies. We can check. We believe the 10% of addicts have received treat. Only 10% of addicts, uh, addicted patients, uh, receive treatment. During their, they get treatment at the end of their their experience. But to, uh, that figure has gone up to 20% in France. Uh, recently with the use of uh, consumption reduction um, uh, treatments like daclofen um, that's that worked in France and not the not the case so much in other countries it, it, re it made people realize that reducing consumption was an acceptable solution so that's the daclofen and canagro so this change of paradigm, which is not just focused on abstinence, is uh, is complicated. It's complicated for associations who had created an identity around abstinence, and that's what the the, the machine was built on. So, so, but they've made progress quickly, and the benefit of doing training is to. Uh, to get people to be more flexible and not believe that you you have to stay just uh, stay with what you know and what you tried yourself we uh, the, you people who work in addiction show that uh, that you need to have a whole palette of solutions not all pa patients react to the same way at the same time so all tools are good as long as they result in an improvement so uh, in the 2020s we'll see the arrival of e-health and e-health uh, when you have this great huge number of untreated patients, we need to help them as quickly as possible. And e-health e doesn't mean replacing a therapist with robots. It doesn't mean depersonalizing health. On the contrary, well, that's my belief anyway, it's, it's uh, help us uh, have uh, information uh, and support by an empathetic human being more quickly. And this, I believe, and this is what I suggested to the authorities, is that we need to develop three or four levels of types of uh, support platforms. The first one would be platforms like what we talked about, Addictaid, information platforms for, to inform and evaluate and provide mutual help, a community and we're going to get back to expert patients so that we can anonymously go and ask questions and find people who we can tell our story to, people who 
can uh, talk uh, appropriately, her competence to give advice and, and support people in some what sometimes difficult times, difficult periods. <coughs> and secondly, there are thera we need therapeutic pa platforms, which are not anonymous anymore, with therapists and the therapists in uh, there are very few addict, addiction specialists. There are very few uh, freelance addiction specialists. So that doesn't meet the current need. Uh, access to the uh, specialist it's, uh, it's difficult. It's, uh, the, the continuum of care is extremely complicated between uh, what's in ho hospital and what's outside of hospital. So that's it's extremely complicated. And the lead time, the, the time it takes to get a, an appointment, so uh, just when people need support, there's there's nothing. There's uh, there's just anxiety. So the platforms can meet uh, more easily meet uh, the needs of uh, people in first line, uh, experts in addictology, and nurse nurses or uh, trained public uh, nurses who are trained in in addiction, and experts and educators. So that means there will be it will provide a quick answer. And, and as a s second phase, of remote consultations and um, networking, the ability to have a network between the doctor, the GP, the psychologist, the chemist, uh, the, the oncologist, uh, we can get them all together uh, for a mini um, conference uh, with the patient. We know that in the networks um, uh, in physical uh, meetings is complicated, so this platform should really facilitate that. And this platform would also allow us to use new tools, applications. We've seen some uh, approved uh, uh, ap applications that have been listed as medical devices in the USA and that are just as effective or efficacious as, a, as a, some treatments. And they have been recognized by the F FDA as a therapeutic tool so when you add this to the this to the continuum of care uh, between the addiction specialist and the patient between two consultations the application allows you to keep retain this connection to save time during uh, interviews and to show a uh, shared uh, interest and so with the help of all these tools, the uh, applications, etc., maybe virtual reality. Uh, there are chat box that also work well. And there's, and they have also an, have an equivalent uh, function to a, uh, in the UK, there's Babylon L's, I believe, that uh, promoted a a, an application on your smartphone that will allow you to consult a, med a doctor who will, who will give you an answer. But these uh, consultation algorithms were provided uh, in Rwanda where there are not enough doctors and it's the algorithm itself that do the diagnostic and, and writes the prescription. So this is not what I'm talking about, but it's it can uh, provide uh, help in developing countries as well. So what I'm trying to say is that we can go from a very, uh, we can have a very, go from a very wide approach to a more specialist, uh, medicalized uh, approach in on these platforms, which facilitates support and uh, and health, health and healthcare. And the first platform, which is uh, less um, uh, interesting for the caregivers, but is the this em epidemiological uh, knowledge and everything that artificial intelligence and big data can provide us in terms of the uh, understand the efficacy 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 of a certain treatment. So all this to say that in the next ten years, I don't know if it will be in two years or ten years, but. Um, uh, health practices will be profoundly uh, changed by everything that uh, digital technologies uh, will provide. So I've told you to, about one revolution, and now I'll uh, pass the floor to the second revolutionary, who is Albert, and who's going to talk uh, about what uh, expert patients are and what they're for. Thank you, Mission. <coughs> It's very difficult to um, to speak after Michelle and all the speakers you, we've heard today, who are all brilliant. So I'm not at all a healthcare professional, 
but I have also experienced addiction for a long time, 33 years personally. So before talking about the Expert Patient uh, Association, I want to talk to you about an experience. Three years ago, we had an expert patient uh, who was uh, who talked about her own experience. So I wanted to talk about the exper my own experience as a patient. Eight years ago, I went to a hospital to um, to uh, go cold turkey from uh, addiction. Um, and the person who worked me was a nurse. And I remember from a detail, I think he had a white jacket, he had an, an English accent, he was called Charles Peter, he talked to me how it would work, set, or it would work. and I, I listened to him, I was, um, uh, and he told me that he was an ex-exit addict like me, so for 30 minutes we talked about our experience. The result of this uh, informal meeting is that that made me, uh, gave me a lot of confidence, uh, I was, I trusted. Um, I wasn't scared anymore, so I arrived, when I arrived the next day to start my uh, treatment, I knew the guy was there, so I trusted him implicitly. I also had also seen a, a guy who'd, um, uh, who had made it, so that was huge in my experience. And what I didn't realize at the time, but is that this guy had gave meaning to my life um, at a time when I was trying to get prepared for withdrawal and, and weaning. And weaning myself off the drug, but, and I remember that I came out of the um, uh, meeting. I really had the belief, the feeling that I had met the best addiction uh, specialist in Paris. He was—that's what I felt. He was—he was a nurse, but he had such a great understanding of what I was, as I was experienced, that it seemed like a really intimate understanding of my my own experience. So I was weaned off uh, the drug. It, it lasted uh, eight, eight days. Eight eight days uh, and I lasted two hours fortunately the guy uh, the guy was waiting me for me outside and he gave me a list of uh, narcotics and uh, anonymous and and without this guy without having met this guy he was there at the start at the in the middle and at the end and he's still there today <coughs> and the only person I remember from my visit to the hospital is that guy uh, his, um, his name is Charles Peter, and I never I was never able to thank him, so I'd like to do that here officially. Charles Peter, if you hear, if you ever hear this. So thanks to the help of the uh, Professor Renault, um, a certain number of us got together to form the association called France Expert Patients Association to introduce uh, expert patients in the continuum of care, someone who ex has the experience of uh, this disease. All the members of the association were uh, addicts or have either got out of addiction or are stable. We don't, we don't uh, impose abstinence. We, we want people to um, recover good quality of life. Uh, we're on uh, social media, uh, either on Addictaid or on the uh, I Don't Smoke Anymore network, Je ne fume fume. I have some members who work uh, professionally. Uh, I'm starting to get, uh, um, I'm, a bit, uh, I'm a bit lost, uh, I'm starting to get stage fright. We share something else as well, apart from the experience of addiction, is that we're all convinced by the role that we can have in the continuum of care. Uh, that's really uh, what motivates us, and that we're, con we're convinced that if we work together with healthcare, we're not going to replace healthcare professionals, but if we work together with them, uh, things will be better for patients, things will be better for addictology which will have better results and it will be better for us as expert patients is because it gives meaning it gives meaning to your life so the association has set itself uh, six objectives uh, this i know this be better so it will be easier for me the first objective is to create a professional certificate uh, accreditation for expert pa patients as michel said that expert patients exist but they don't they're not officially recognized and anyone uh, can do it as long as they have uh, some experience in addiction and uh, and they've escaped from addiction they can d define themselves as uh, an expert patient so we wanted to create a framework for this definition so the first thing we did before creating this accreditation was to define what an expert patient is based on our own experience so there are nine points which uh, emerged. So I don't have a slide. I'm a bit old school. I've just got a piece of paper. 
Where are my nine points? Here they, here they are. So an expert patient is someone who has a personal experience of addiction and escaping from addiction, or at least has created strategies to stabilize their life. An expert patient can talk about their experience and has a role and a way of thinking about their experience of addiction. An expert patient is someone who has a theoretical understanding of addiction and its mechanisms. It's someone who knows the different operating systems and, stra and therapeutic strategies without necessarily knowing how to implement them. They know they exist. It's someone who facilitates access to health care, who supports uh, patients in, in care and is an interface between the caregivers and the patients. They are bound by uh, professional secre secrecy. They uh, work in preventive actions as well as training in a therapeutic, therapeutic training plans on addiction. They can be involved in dialogues on, the, on public uh, um, policy. For example, at the end of August, we will be uh, working on overdose day, raising awareness on overdose, because we have uh, experience on that. We have ideas about how um, uh, certain um, treatments can be administered. Uh, if you know the legislation, do you know if, I mean, if you have the right to distribute syringes? Can you authorize to do testing? If someone also has a... Um, uh, doesn't judge others, who has natural empathy, who has lived experience of what the patient is going through. Regarding the, the not, not judging, that's easy to say, and it's easier said than done. I work on the Addict Aid Forum, even though I've understood that it's a disease, and I, I still uh, can't f help myself from uh, judging people. A week ago, a young person, a 13-year-old, Shared that she that she or he she's uh, getting high on insecticides. So I I couldn't help myself judging. So it, it's really difficult to not uh, to judge others. So regarding the definition of the expert patient and the recognition uh, by France Expert Addiction, we recognise as a training org organisation. We will uh, are we going to submit a, a cert professional certification accreditation file. So that should occur by the end of September. You should have a professional certification for expert patients. And the point of that accreditation professionally is, first of all, to make the patients safer, to also make um, the employer safer. And the idea is also to guarantee high quality of care. It also um, makes sure that the skills are recognized and acknowledged. Some people work as expert patients in um, in aid associations, but with that certification, it could help uh, their skills be better acknowledged and recognized. There's another wish, and it is to um, detach the status of expert patient from, um, from a healthcare institution or from a university dip diploma, uh, more specifically. Um. Create a differentiation there. The second goal is to, um, I mean, the second goal of the association is to to validate candidates and to maybe give them training. And the third goal is to promote the the status of an expert patient in addiction in addictology, then to create um, partnerships with other associations of expert patients, which is that, that they exist for chronic diseases or um, psychiatric diseases. We'd like to work on prevention um, within the wider, or, I mean, within the general public or also with professionals, and uh, we'd like to make sure that we could create a. Uh, um, um, a help platform between addicts. We do have the Addict Aid uh, website. We have 15 p p people being admins on the forum and would like to work on that some more. It's nice to have a forum that is uh, backed up by um, Addict Aid because it's a website where you could find quite a lot of information, um, you know, peer-reviewed information, um, um, different uh, addresses of other interesting websites and sources. On the forum, uh, you can remain anonymous, 
both as an admin and as a participant of the forum. The forum has eight main themes, tobacco, alcohol, cannabis, other drugs, um, medical drugs, behavioral addictions, and gambling. A third of messages have to do with tobacco, another third for alcohol, and then uh, the last third more or less for other addictions. We have 1,200 subscribers on the forum. And uh, Michelle told you about um, helping one another on social networks. For, for a forum, it's a bit different in terms of the timeline. People who share something on the forum, very often they, they talk about their situation at length. They talk about uh, where they are uh, in terms of their addiction. They talk about their previous attempts to, um, to get clean. They talk about the environment as well. So you could maybe go and look at things in a bit more detail and take your time also and, you know, deal with those things a bit more calmly than you would on a social network. Sometimes you also have very short messages, of course, but I believe that on a forum, you have a better opportunity to, to deal with things slightly differently. And, and again, take a little bit more time. Some of you might know um, the, the help groups and um, you could go to the, the alcohol forum and there's a dialogue there that has been ongoing since March 30th. So we have about 15 people who've been speaking to one another since March 30th. We have more than 300 messages on that feed and we have about 15 people who are really helping each other out. We no longer need to intervene as admins. They're just helping each other out, giving, you know, talking about daily news, this is what's going on with me, it's going well or it's not going so well. They talk about their kids and their holidays, it's all women, and they talk about what they're going to make for dinner. It's very moving to see, and there's a message where they, they say, yeah, it's, it's going to work out because we'll think about each other tonight and we're going to support one another. And it's it really created a real community. It's virtual, of course, but still it matters in real life. And, you know, a relationship, love, is so important in addiction. It's, it's a real healing tool. And I think, you know, people don't always know one another in real life, but still, you know, on forums, sometimes I don't even know if it's a man or a woman that I'm talking to, and still it works. So this is one of the missions that we gave ourselves, the, 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 um, the, the creation of that forum and the administration thereof, and I hope that it'll continue. I'd like to thank Michel for that. I hope next, next year I'll be able to tell you a bit more about France Passion Expert. I'm, I'm super nervous right now, so I think I'll just cut it short. Thank you very much. <laughs>